What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Last Days of Warcast. We are Southern California-based band, The Last Days of War. I am Mark. I am Mark. I'm Danny. And I'm Danny, too. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, first on the agenda, shots. Shots. Gatorade. Did you say Gatorade? I yeah, Gatorade. so... Yeah, I, uh... Oddly enough, like I don't have any shot glasses in my house, and I rarely have alcohol here unless, like, people come over. So the only time I really drink is when I'm over there. Not the not the pop the cool bubble here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what would but, they say uh, about you at the meetings? Um. <laughs> Rob, how you doing, buddy? How's it going out there? Oh, it's going. It's going. You know, just a million miles a minute, you know? Um, But today... Uh, we we got a couple of announcements. One, as much as we wanted Little Karma to come out on Seven Eleven, I think it's going to get pushed back. Yeah, I think till the probably around the the first week of August, I believe, is what we're we're looking at. So, yeah, just to give it enough time to promote, but just know that there's going to still be a Little Karma coming out on July eleventh. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man, Being that's that fine. Free stuff every day. I'm always, I'm always uh, quality over what we're releasing. Over, let's hurry up and release it. So you know, yeah, yeah. Except for into the stars, but we're we're not going into that. <laughs> one. <laughs> you know, what do you mean we're releasing the song now? Yep, we just did it. So I'll tell you the story behind that, Rob. We were waiting to finally start releasing stuff. And uh, Danny and I looked at each other and we're just like, let's just fucking do it so we can fucking get it going. I think mean, that's what we did. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's what happened. I mean, you, you know, we yeah. definitely, we definitely, uh, you know, pushed it down the hill, I guess. You know, I mean, yeah. yeah. We got that ball rolling. We got at, that ball you know, at the, at the time, it seemed like a really the best decision. And then, you mm-hmm. know, over time, some things just might not age as well as others and you know yeah. maybe this is one of them i you know we'll see so my 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 honestly my my feeling behind that one being the first one was it was like it's going to be our first single no one's really going to hear it anyways let's just get it going <laughs> like oh no one's going to hear it but we're going to put out like three different versions of it holy well, shit they get enough of it there's two different versions it's just on three different playlists <laughs> Well, right. the first one got re-released again with another mix. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It gets yeah. three times the plays, and I'm just like, ah, all right. Um, but from the sounds of it, I think you love that song. It's one of my favorites. You know, but, like, I really think that they should uh, tear down the Sistine Chapel and replace. It's actually, it it's song. actually going to be, it's going to be in the, it's going to be in the set list three times actually for every time that it comes up Good. that we release. Good. It. I, I hope it does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our set will be sponsored by Spotify. Yeah, <laughs> by Spotify. Rob, Rob, what if it became the one that everybody's screaming an encore for at the end of, of the Jesus. show? Fuck, man. You're already making me think of Chester. Uh, <laughs> oh! <laughs> Baby, don't, Rob! No, it's um, more man. like a, a Linkin Park type moment, like where you're wanting more of the, uh, that sound, you know? Yeah, in the end, as opposed to more of the rock sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if I could come back with a ballad for a for an encore. You know, uh, I I mean, the only way I would be okay with it is if it happened to be like our biggest fucking song that like got us somewhere. Then you know what I mean. Like if it if that happened to be the song that blew us up, and that's what people know us for because that song got popular first and. That would be my only exception to coming back and encoring with like the the fucking ballad. But other than that, I agree with you, Rob. Yes, uh, I would want to end the show with a bang. But to you be mean, honest, you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to end with what I would do for love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was thinking more uh, Creed. <laughs> end it with Creed. Hold me now. Oh boy! Oh man! Let's see, just that do all great. the big. Big arms, the whole time. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. big arms. <laughs> Josh, how you been this week, buddy? 
I'm doing all right, man. My kids are finally on summer vacation, so I've got them all day long, keeping busy. Uh, my youngest got to go ice skating for the first time on Saturday. Oh, that's so dope. She, she had a lot of fun with that. My son had an opportunity to go and decided, nah, I'm going to play video games all day. So now he's the only one in the whole family who can't ice skate. But other than that, nah, everything's going all right. Um, had to put my family dog down over the weekend, so it was... A little tough for the kids, but ice skating helped, and now they're already on that. When are we getting a puppy? And my daughter already <laughs> named the damn puppy, so it's like, geez, show some respect to the damn dead dog first. Like, can we at least mourn for a week or so? No, nah, yeah. throw that shit in the trash. When are we getting this dog, we can go pick it up tomorrow. Damn. Yeah, yeah, man. When uh, when we lost our cat, uh, when was it last was it last year? November. November. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I felt like it was like a couple of weeks later and the kids were like, can we get another animal? I'm like, oh, not not right now, dudes. I'm like, that was, that was rough, man. That was, it's losing a, losing a family pet's always hard, you know, especially like if you guys actually, if the family really cares about the animal, especially. So, <laughs> you know, what about you, Danny? How you doing, man? Good, man. Just been hanging out. Um, bought a couple new video games. So I've been kind of, you know, Ooh. working pretty hard at that, you know, so. What you playing? What you playing? Uh Ghost of Toshima. Ghost of Toshima. Yes, dude, that game's awesome, and dude. I love that I game. I got uh, Gran Turismo Seven, and then I also got uh, Dying Light Two. Nice. I haven't so, played the last two, but Ghost of Toshima is like a top ten favorite game ever that I've ever played. That game's amazing. Yeah. I played about a half an hour of it so far, and so far it's uh, it's it's got some kind of longer cut screens and stuff you know, mm-hmm. in it. And I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of when those are too long. Uh, um, but like, I would say other than that, man, for me, the game is fucking amazing so far, yeah. you know, uh, and uh, yeah, it's really good. everything that you can do like combat wise and like sword fighting wise, it like expands tremendously as you go, as you progress through the game. So it, it, it gets really fucking cool after a while. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the, uh, like the combat system, like the AI, it, uh, I think, I, I feel like it adapts to you pretty quickly in what you're yes. doing, so it changes. So, and I feel like, uh, so far I've gained new skills, and and you have to do all kinds of different counters, and it's pretty cool game. So so far, um, all of them have been really good, but I haven't had a chance to go too far into some of them. So, yeah. I'm gonna get there. Nice, nice. Yeah, man. I myself, I've been doing all right. My uh, uncle's services were this past Friday. It was a uh, Lovely ceremony, you know, full of tears, but also full of a lot of laughs and and good memories there, man. I'm gonna miss them, but we all we all had a really good day that day. It was nice. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Um, so, Rob, what are we talking about today, man? Uh, today we're talking about what makes a good venue. All right. Um, uh, basically, sound system. <laughs> the well, sound guy says sound system. Gotta have <laughs> guy. We're gonna need a sound system. That's a given. Well, I, I think you would think, right? But some places don't have built-in sound systems. So a fucking but the, a loading dock. I, I mean, there's there's a lot of, it, but then that scales it. But what makes a great music venue? Go, you go first. Go. Um, Bathrooms with toilet paper. Laundry. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, but all ages. Do you have an all age venue that doesn't serve alcohol, or do you have? Uh, twenty one and up. So both, both, both. I, I mean, obviously, we've all played both types of shows, right? So, um, they're both fun for very different reasons. But for me, I, I prefer the older crowd, the twenty, you know, the twenty one and over crowd, because not worried about a pit starting and a kid getting hurt or something. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> so. Uh, just a little bit uh, less of uh, liabilities going on when it's a 21 and over crowd, you know? I feel you. Um, and then obviously, Danny, you said sound. Yeah. Is there is there a level of which a venue should have? Uh, you know, most most writers I've ever seen and writers that I've written is, is anything that'll do, you know, uh, 129 decibels peak, you know, for over a period of time, you know. So and then and then, of course, you know, depending, it's a it's a fun situation because when you're walking into a venue and you're using, you know, maybe you're bringing a console 
and you're just using their stacks and racks, you know, their speakers and amps and their whole system there. Um, it varies. So I feel like uh, PA system, you know, um, is a big thing. And I think we've talked about it too before is I've seen some bands, writers that are just insane with the different stuff they're asking for. And uh, well, we'll save we'll save that in for the for the back end of this. But uh, but as far as sound goes, does is there a a size like we've we've all been to those bars where it's like just two little, you know, 18s on stands and you're like, what the fuck is this going to do? You know, uh, if so, it was like a if it's like a thousand person venue, I would probably go like. You know, uh, maybe three, uh, you know, four eighteen subwoofers system, and then I'd probably go eight, you know, probably eight mains flown aside, or you know, depending what size it is, you know, smaller C PA, probably at eight. If it's a bigger one, probably four mains, you know, per side. But they should already have that for at least a thousand person capacity venue, right? Yeah, but you'd be surprised. <laughs> You you <laughs> you, you wouldn't so. be in business very long, I would think. <laughs> yeah, like uh, if you had a thousand person capacity and you didn't actually have a sound system, like you don't yeah. actually have a business. That's well, operating. like I I worked I worked for a venue that that had way more PA than what they needed for the building, and I've had a few artists that had came through that venue that they would bring their own subs and they would put them out in front of the sub in front of the stage because they didn't want the subs under the stage because there was so much power that it was just, they could feel it and they didn't want to feel it where me, I'm like, I want to feel that shit. You know, I want to feel it through my feet, you know? Yeah. So I want to watch the drummer vibrate off the stage. Just, the the so venue not, that I, I, the venue that I worked at started to do audio at if, if the a bass player and it was cranked up enough, hit the right note, you were either going to fall down or shit your pants. So or both. <laughs> definitely you need, you need a good, amazing PA. Yeah. Boy. One thing I love about going to shows with Danny is like, so we've been to a few together now and he'll look around and he'll look at the setup and he'll be like, yeah, this show's going to sound good. Like he'll instantly know, like, just look, he'll just take a quick, he'll just take a quick look and he'll be like, yeah, this is going to be a good show because uh, they have the there, proper shit. There's, shoes, there's you know? certain brands of gear that, like, certain level of people can't fuck with because the price tag is so much. So when you see that type of gear, there's a good chance that if the audio engineer that night isn't great, at least he's on a system that's probably tuned very well and it's taken care of. Yeah. So hopefully, at least, hopefully. at least, yeah, but it's like at least the audio guy that that's decent is walking in with a fighting chance you know i mean i've seen some guys walk into venues where like the room isn't tuned and you know guys just i mean the the graphic eq he's got the cuts he's making you're just like right oh. <laughs> jeez I'll ask you, you guys know? a question I'll, I'll ask you guys a question how do you guys feel about venues that require you they're like you're using a backline. We have a backline. It's, it's backline for you don't bring any of your shit maybe they just tell the drummer bring your cymbals that's it and then the shit's fucking falling apart. Uh, Josh, I'll, I'll let you start with this because you, you being a drummer, I'm sure uh, it affects you the most, right? So. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And we, we can speak from a mutual experience. Um, I've done shows with you where we've been told that there was not going to be a back line, had to bring all my own equipment then show up for loaded and they tell us oh by the way there's a backline kit and we need you to use this and you can't use your own shit yeah and now you got all your gear hanging out yeah, yeah and it's and like okay well then what am i going to do with all my shit and then it's a problem that oh well we can't have you leave it in the venue because it's blocking stuff yeah so and it's like you just want me to leave thousands of dollars of equipment in my car like no <laughs> you know like yeah yeah, and it's like, realistically, I mean, come on, guys. It's not that I'm, like, a guitar player with a cab. I have a whole fucking drum set with cymbals, and I have a rack. I have, like, more shit than I really need, to be honest with you. But all this <laughs> crap that drummer, I have, It's okay. It's, might as so well I have it. the honesty. <laughs> just, just tell you me. You can like, do I, it if you want, you know? 
I'm the type of dude that, yeah, I got symbols <laughs> everywhere, and I'm going to fucking hit every single one of them, too, because I went through the trouble to bring this shit and set it up, so I'm going to use it all. So yeah. to be to have to use somebody else's backline, I, I choose not to, but playing so many shows and with the way things are when you're forced to cut time, having a good backline, though, does help. If you are lucky enough to be on a bill with fellow bands that you guys can get together, talk to the fellow drummers and work shit out between you that sometimes they may have something that's a little better than yours and you guys can kind of work out a plan together that you can make it work smoothly for you. But you can't always expect venues to really take care of their shit like you said where, oh, here's the house kit and then it's like, dude. My little son's drum set is fucking better than what you're expecting me to play on. <laughs> and you've got like fans out there that are expecting to hear something that they want to hear great. And it's like, no matter what I do, this isn't going to work. Like, mm. who are you bullshitting here? So yeah. you would expect, yes, at least a bare minimum, not like you, you shouldn't be expecting them to have rehearsal quality gear. Like, that's what I'm going to use on a stage over in Hollywood. Mm. Yeah. Um, for me, the biggest thing for me is I always use my own microphone, dude, because I remember when <laughs> when I first started playing shows, we had played, a, I think it was at Fellas, actually. I don't remember the band it was before us, but they, <laughs> I remember distinctly watching the singer grab the microphone and stick it down his pants so he could start clapping with the crowd. And I'm like, I got to sing into that in about 20 minutes, dude. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, bro? <laughs> I'm like, what? Are, why are we doing this, dude? Like, I can hear uh, you. know Steve what, dude? Like, if any any audio guy at any venue, if you bring your own mic, you just walk up to him and say, "Hey, I got my own mic." He's, Pop, there it is. Go for it. You know. Dude. So it's uh, me personally. If I was singing all the time, I would I would carry my own microphone. Yeah, it, it's to the point to where like I learned to just not even. I don't even say it. I just walk up, unplug the mic they have, plug mine in. Seeing, switching back, they don't even know, dude. You know? Yeah. What, what about you, Rob, when it I comes think, to singing in microphones? I think Mark is now happy that he doesn't have to sing after me. He gets to sing with me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rob, thanks for, thanks for sticking that microphone down your pants, Rob. Yeah. What about uh, you, Danny? Does, does it affect you all that much when it comes to, like, having to use other, like, other cabs for back lines and stuff like that? Well, I have... I, I would like to, um, and for the shows that we've done so far, I haven't had a guitar amp on stage, and I've True. just gone straight out of my pedal board. And so when we talk about that scenario for, like, I feel like at a certain level of shows that you're doing, like, you know, uh, kind of festival-style local shows where it's just band after band and you get a real quick sound check, it's nice to just go, I'm one XLR right in this guy. I need something power and I'm ready, you know? Yeah. So, but yeah, um, if I, if I was, uh, carrying an amp, uh, I run a stereo guitar cab. So I've got my pedal goes out left and right and stereo guitar cabs. And then I have them set up left, right to where they're different cabs and different heads through like the amp modeling um so i use a a line six helix um so for me it's not a problem yeah. so uh a lot of times guitar players at venues are you know they're of course they're bringing their guitar they're bringing their cables and stuff but a lot of venues will allow you to bring your head so you could just take your head plug it in whatever cabinet they have so as long as they have a decent a couple decent cabinets band is set you know nice. so for guitar players and bass players it's it's not as big of an issue like you said than it is drummers yeah. if you're doing certain ways you know so there's there's a lot of ways around that you know yeah and why does the bass player always bring the biggest fucking cab possible dude that's every time <laughs> well the funny <laughs> part the funny part is is that if i don't know your sound if you're not if i'm not a band you're not a band that i work with all the time more than likely if you're a local band, the only thing I'm going to grab is your DI signal. And that's all I'm going to do because I could make it sound whatever I want. And whatever you have coming out of your head, it may be not the greatest thing. A lot of 
mm-hmm. like local bands, a lot of times, you know, they don't have their shit set up to be what you know, it's not really no. dialed in to the best, you know. No, uh, some of these, Ooh, some man. of these bands, some of the bands that you go see big shows, I mean, they're really dialed in, you know. Yeah. What about you, Rob? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, as far as using the house mic, and I mean, change the cover of it, whatever. Fuck it, <laughs> I'm still gonna destroy it. Like, <laughs> I gotta clap to the crowd somehow, you know. You're gonna get the clap. <laughs> Just turns um, around, starts making a clap, dude. Okay. <laughs> no, but we did. My, I've been in previous projects where uh, the drummer had to play on his kit because just the layout, the way he was playing was, uh, what was it? It was right handed. Uh, downstairs, left-handed upstairs. So like his kit and his feet. But he was all were, this way instead of yeah. He's a little wonky, and so he had a special cable so he could do the hi hats backwards. And it's just like, hey, we can't use that kit. Like there's no way it'll work. <laughs> but we brought a crew that could switch this whole thing out and have it up and ready in less than five. And oh, that's okay. every member. And they're like, bullshit. No, you're using the house kit. And we're like trust us stay out of our way we can do this and it was like clockwork and everyone moved around everyone kit was set up the other kit was set up down on the ground any complaints no no get it off the stage cool break up and they're like that was actually the quickest i've ever seen anyone handle that and do that so part of that being has to fall on the responsibility of the band to be ready for those situations to where you can't switch out equipment but Hey, you know, I got to use my rig, but I brought uh, the crew to help me switch it out and get it all set up within a minute. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So what are some other things that, that you feel make the great venue other than that stuff? Like, is there anything else you can think of on your end? Uh, great acoustics. Mm-hmm. So if you're bumping out so much for the right size of the building or the right layout of the building. You know, that's a big factor, whether it's indoors or outdoors, because outdoors, you got to bump it, what, twice as hard just so mm-hmm. everyone else can hear it in the back. Yeah. So you got that, that is an PA. issue. Too. Yeah. Bigger PA, more equipment. You yeah. got to, you got to boost it up for that atmosphere. I don't worry about uh, it so much these days because we have in-ears now, but I always hated going to play venues and they didn't have floor monitors for, for you. It's like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> well, I mean, to be honest, if the, as long as it's loud enough for the crowd to hear, like if you can still kind of hear off of that, that's yeah. still somewhat of a monitor for me. But holy hell, yeah, no, you you got to have a good setup for the artist too. Yeah, for uh, sure. having monitors that helps too. Uh, but I've played tons of gigs where we didn't have floor monitors, and it's just all right, go. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, but those venues were only like hundred person, hundred fifty people capacity, yeah. so those will work for that. But if you brought like the rig Danny's talking about to a place that's the size of you know Friar Tux, like God damn, you are not going to have anyone left that's not going to just be like <laughs> peeled back. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Um, yeah, that's like, that's me. You're talking about a dive bar, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, here we go, just turn it on. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Um, yeah. For me, I think a venue needs to have a full bar. Yeah. Um, I've been in a couple of shows where the singer requests like a shot, and you're like, they don't even have alcohol here. How am I supposed to get you a shot? Like, I can't make you happy to fucking theoretically do your job. Uh, and I can't even go buy alcohol. So like that makes you kind of hate, hate the band you went to go see when he's calling out for shit. But like, if you go to a venue, he's like, Oh, I want a shot of Jack Daniels. And you can turn go to the bar and be like, Hey, uh, I, I brought you a shot of Jack Daniels. And he's like, oh, all right, cool. <laughs> like yeah, I see how you did that. <laughs> but you can, you're able to actually accommodate and then build a bond with the band member. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey dude, thank you for buying me that shot. Let me get you around or whatever. Yeah. The camaraderie around a bar for me 
is a lot more than just drinking alcohol and getting fucked up. It's the relationships and the conversations we have at the bar. So yeah. I feel like having a bar there, one brings in the party crowd where you're just like, hey, let's loosen up, liven up, uh, but be responsible, hopefully. Yeah. And so it, for me, that's where I kind of relate. Yeah. And for me, another thing is uh, just making sure that these venues that you're playing at have good security, man, because shit pops off. And if you don't have the proper people there to to get things settled, things can go south really quickly. I mean, we heard Josh tell some crazy stories not that long ago. You got to bring up my shit. Bring me into this right away. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, we've all, I mean, we've played enough shows to where we've all experienced, you know, something going crazy in the crowd where you're like, thank God there's security here because if not, that could have gone south really, really quickly. So yeah, real yeah. quick. Yeah. Um, did you want to go into the, to the next, to the next thing? Yeah. Let's talk about it. Um, real quick. Um, yeah, no, that was real discreet. <laughs> so discreet. <laughs> I need to chill these shots. Um, okay, so real quick, uh, brings us back to the venue. Uh, when you, a band presents a writer and essentially the writer says, hey, these are the things we need in order to play a show to our fullest capacity, whether it be a case of water, a case of beer, uh, fruit, and vegetable platter, whatever it be. Certain artists started picking up on little things that you would change, whether it be um, all green M&Ms or, you know, I want you to pick out all the brown ones, you know, would it be something unique? So then that way, if the club just goes, oh, they want a case of beer, water and M&Ms. And it's like, well, you didn't even fucking read what we we wrote down. You just read M and M's and got us that. So then, the second they saw brown M and M's, you go, oh, they didn't read this shit. What would be one unique item that you would want on the writer that you could kind of be like, they fucked up? Two ply toilet paper, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Two ply. That's, that's not a bad one. Quilted. <laughs> I wanted to quilt it. Yeah. <laughs> Cause that bar that bar toilet paper, dude, you fucking wipe your ass with a whisper with that shit, do you know what I mean? Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't steal the rolls of toilet paper from the hotels anymore because those aren't too black. No, man. Yeah. It's horrible. Uh yeah, man. No, I, I yeah, so I mean I say that jokingly, but I would probably go with uh I don't know, man, probably like a specific brand of water instead of just saying water, you know? Yeah. Um some, something along the lines of that. What about you, Danny? Uh like you said, I would I would definitely water would be one of those things. Um I worked for an artist at one point that would only drink a certain type of bottle of water and the venue, it was one of those things like they literally had to go like make a special shopping trip to go get this water for this artist. So what there's shit it? like it? that that happens, huh? What was the water? Do you remember? It was Fiji water. Uh, so it was just, it was just, but it was, it wasn't just Fiji water. It was only red Gatorade. It was Fiji water there. And there was like, there's, there's literally a half dozen other things like that, that are like, it has to be this type of like pistachios, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. real specific. So like I said, this artist had probably like, like a dozen real specific things that, you know, it was like a shopping list. So like every day, that whole thing was re-upped, you know? So, yeah. yeah. What about you, Josh? Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of them, but just to know they pay attention. Um, they're a Japanese dessert. Um, you know, like around Christmas time, people get those chocolate hazelnut straws? Yeah. Mine, mine would be the... Deca, D E K A, not D I C K A, Deca <laughs> chocolate banana wafer sticks. So you that, have to go to an Asian market to find them. Yeah, they're really sounds, fucking good. My wife good. hates yeah. them. 
I kept the uh, the the tin can smells like fresh bananas. So even after I finish them, I keep the can just to open it every once in a while and piss my wife off. <laughs> it's always a, it's always a little bit of a plus when it's something that you absolutely love that you know like your spouse kind of hates, so you know that you know they're going to be all for you, dude. You know, you're like cool. Right. <laughs> I have to yeah. admit though, she's nice enough to go find them for me, and like if we go shopping at the Asian market, she'll remind me, "Hey, did you forget your stupid banana treats?" So, <laughs> go get that shit. Yeah. No, yeah, man. Um, Rob, you already said yours. No. For what I would put on the writer? Yeah. I don't know. That TP one, man, that one's pretty solid. Yeah, dude. Got to think about the cheeks, man. It's, you know it's always nice, too, to throw something on there you need. Like, if, you, uh, if you're a whiskey drinker, you know, you put a bottle of whiskey on there. You know, if, you're, if you smoke cigarettes, two packs of smokes or whatever, you know. If you, especially if you're, if you're a bigger artist, you know, the, it, whatever you could put in the contract, you know. Yeah. I hope to God. I hope to God nobody is going through two packs of smokes in the in the period of a show night, dude. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but you see, the thing is, is, is you have to understand something when you're on tour mm -hmm. and you smoke. See, Rob's already like, yep, yeah, because uh, you're, you you're going to you? give away. Yeah, you yeah, want to yeah, be yeah, you're right, you're when right. you're in a band. You want to be you. that guy that's but, like, boom, here's a smoke. Like, hey, check me out on Instagram. You know, follow. What's up? You know. Yeah, so that's that's bring me a pack of these. I'll get you a backstage pass. Like, oh shit! <laughs> it's, like fucking a it's got a hundred people in the back, and fucking Rob's car is just filled with smokes. <laughs> <laughs> got your hips, yeah. He's got cartons of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> He's all driving off. Uh, cigarettes. I'm not mad at that either. He's like, we're not even playing a show tonight. I just wanted cigarettes. Fucking. You're like, Rob, man, how, much, how, much did we, oh, how much did we get paid? Come on in. I'll get you backstage. He's like 20 Don't worry about it. I know people. Marlboro Reds. Fuck. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Get the wrong cigarettes. That's like buying the wrong soda. Yes. Like, Dr. Like, Pepper? Dr. Yeah. Pepper? That Dr. Pepper? <laughs> it doesn't even matter if you dress it up with a fucking flavor. It still tastes like fucking ugh. By the way, Rob, just recently they said that uh, Dr. Number Pepper two? is now is now the number two soda uh, behind Coca Cola. Like it, it they passed. Pepsi. Uh, they passed Pepsi. Yeah. Fuck so. off. And then still the, the third Pepsi. one was. Me and CM uh, Punk are all Pepsi. All Pepsi. Yeah. All Pepsi. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, this has been the last days of Warcast. We are Southern California based band, the last days of war. Even though one of us is in Texas now, um, please. <laughs> Check the links in the bio. Check the links in the bio. He fucking left. You guys, thank you for supporting. Check the links in the bio. Keep streaming our shit. We got new new songs coming out soon. We're out. All right. <laughs>